This is Ezekiel 4 for Bible study. Now, son of man, take a block of clay, put it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then lay siege to it. Erect siege works against it. Build a ramp up to it. Set up camps against it and put battering rams around it. Then take an iron pan, place it as an iron wall between you and the city, and turn your face toward it. It will be under siege, and you shall besiege it. This will be a sign to, to the people of Israel. Then lie on your left side and put the sin of the people of Israel upon yourself. You are to bear their sin for the number of days you lie on your side. I have assigned to you the same number of days as the years of their sin. Okay, so there you have a year to a, a day to year prophecy, just like in Revelation 11, we had that day to year prophecy of the uh, the witnesses dying, and then three and a half days later they rise, which is three and a half years later at the same resurrection that all are going to witness. I have assigned to you the same number of days as the years of their sin. So for 390 days, you will bear the sin of the people of Israel. After you have finished this, lie down again, this time on your right side and bear the sin of the people of Judah. I have assigned you 40 days, a day for each year. Turn your face toward the siege of Jerusalem and with bared arm prophesy against her. I will tie you up with ropes so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have finished the days of your siege. Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt, put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. You are to eat it during the 390 days you lie on your side. Weigh out 20 shekels of food to eat each day and eat it at set times. Also measure out a sixth of a hint of water and drink it at set times. Eat the food as you would a loaf of barley bread. Bake it in the sight of the people using human excrement for fuel. The Lord said in this way, the people of Israel will eat defiled food among the nations where I will drive them. Then I said, not so, sovereign Lord. I've never defiled myself. From my youth until now, I have never eaten anything found dead or torn by wild animals. No impure meat has ever entered my mouth. Very well, he said, I will let you bake your bread over cow dung instead of human excrement. He then said to me, son of man, I am about to cut off the food supply in Jerusalem. The people will eat rationed food in anxiety and drink rationed water in despair for food and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each other and will waste away because of their sin. Huh? I wonder if God's about to do that with this people, given that This is an example to us, that it is referring to us. Wonder if he's getting ready to do that. Wonder if he's already begun to do that. Chapter 5. Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind. For I will pursue them with drawn sword, but take a few hairs and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to all Israel. Huh, a third, a third. Where else have I heard that? Where else have you heard that? Well, let's read on. Let's see if we can try to get some hints from this. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations with countries all around her. Yet in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. Oh, no, this is just for the Israelites, not for Christians. No, 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 no. Christians are so righteous. They're so good. Christians are worse than the Israelites ever were. Worse than the Israelites ever were. We should know that whatever happened to them should be an example to us. We should know that. So where have you heard a third? Have you heard that in the trumpets? Have I been telling you? that that is Jerusalem, that that is referring to Jerusalem, that he is separating the wheat from the tares. And what's happening? What's happening? He's tucking a few of those hairs away, but the majority are being scattered to the wind and thrown in the fire. You tell me, have I been speaking the truth or not? And how would I know? How would I know that if not from God? Who taught me so that I can teach you? Do I speak on my own authority? Is this a message that you want to hear? Is this a message that other people want to hear? No, it's not. I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, nor will I ever have that because few will even listen 
to the message of God, and even fewer will obey it. Let me read it again. Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair inside the city. Inside what? What's the city? Oh, inside Jerusalem. You mean inside the church. You mean inside his people. Ooh. Take a third of the and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind. For I will pursue them with drawn sword. He's pursuing his own people, guys. Or at least those who swore that they were his people. But take a few hairs and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to all Israel. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem. Who's he doing this to? His own people, or at least those who claim to be his. Those who were called to be his, but didn't pick it up. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations, which with countries all around her. Yet in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. So more than pagans. What else have I been telling you? Have I been telling you that that curse of bitter water is going out? Have I been talking with you about the parable of the wedding feast when God revokes his invitation to those who were in the kingdom, those who had been called but couldn't be bothered to show up, and he goes out, sends his servants out to find what? The nations and countries around her, those who haven't even known him because they're going to know their debt and they're going to respond. These are the ones who are going to love him. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. Do you hear him talking to the kingdom that he invited to the wedding feast? This is what the sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. So you're even worse than the pagans. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations because of all your detestable idols. I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst... Parents will eat their children. The children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. A third, a third, a third. What does this sound like, guys? Anything I've been warning about, anything I've been pleading with you, come back, come back, attend, re you know, obey, attend what he has commanded you to attend, assemble even more as you see the day draw near, show up to build his temple, stop caring about your own house. Those who are not doing these things, are foolish, foolish. Those who say, oh, I'm not going to show up until, you know, until I'm more dedicated to the Lord. Excuse me? Like, that's an excuse? You have the ability to make the decision that you're going to be dedicated to the Lord. How is it that you think that I'm that dumb that I would go along with some sort of justification like that and go, oh, yeah, you better wait till you're ready. Ignorant. I am not that ignorant. Then my anger will cease and my wrath against them will subside and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath on them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you in the sight of all who pass by. By the way, throw back to the Old Testament, Second Chronicles chapter 7. He promised he would do this. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. To destroy you. Not you're going to have a chance. To destroy you. Once you're destroyed, there's no coming back. Eh? Those of you who think that this is a joke, I don't know what you think you're playing with. 
I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your food supply. I will send famine and wild beasts against you, and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Am I saying this to scare you? Absolutely. I am saying this to scare you. Not of me, but that you should be afraid of the Lord. You should be afraid enough to get it together, to believe that what he has said he will do, and that there comes a point when you can't turn back. There comes a point when he's done. He is done giving chances. I don't know how much more clearly I can say this to you, that your chances are almost up, that he has already, his angel, his third angel has already blown that third trumpet. That curse of bitter water has already gone out to those who speak falsely, who swear falsely in his name. One trumpet left. One trumpet left before the witnesses die. I have no idea when it will be blown. I know that he will reveal it to me because that's what he's done with every single trumpet. But he hasn't revealed it yet. All I know is that there's one trumpet left before the witnesses die. After that trumpet or after the fifth trumpet, no one repents. And here's what I want to tell you. In those of, I've already told you that each trumpet is shaving off counterfeit Christians. They are being separated into either the tares or the wheat. Well, counterfeit Christians are being separated into the tares, reserved for the fire. My understanding is that with this third temple, that counterfeit Christians, those who don't respond to him and don't obey him, will fall. They will think that they are in him, but they will fall. And so my understanding of what he's doing is that there are some who will not be able to turn back. And as it is, the word already tells us that. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back into repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the son all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. If you have ears to hear that, return to God. Because I'm telling you right now, you don't have until the very end, up until the moment he comes. You do not have all of that time. I've demonstrated that for you very clearly in the word. And as it is, My understanding is that there are those who have been shaved off, who have been separated out, thrown to the wind, thrown in the fire, reserved for the fire, and that teasing out has been happening this entire year. And my understanding is that he has gone out to the street. He has had enough of this counterfeit church, but what did he say? Reserve some of those, tuck them into the fold of your garment. Some of those hairs, not many, a few hairs. And I see that very clearly. I see that so clearly, so painfully clear. Of all those on the channel, a handful show up. Of that handful, a few do the work. And I have been watching people fall since I started talking about this curse going out. Please discern this message with God.